Okay, we're back, we're live. I'm Jay Fidel, this is Think Tech. And here we are on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And we are uh, in Kauai for the Kauai Energy Conference here in the Marriott Hotel in Lihui and having a wonderful time. We've interviewed many, many people. We did a live show at uh, 12 noon with Mina Morita and Marco Mangelsdorf, our customary biweekly show called Mina, Marco, and Me on Monday. <laughs> so one of my favorites. But one of my other favorites is Beth Tokioka. She's the communications manager of KIUC, which is a fabulous energy company here in Kauai, one that the whole world can learn from. Welcome yet again to our show, Beth. Thank you, Jay. It's so nice to have you and Ian back here on Kauai. We just saw you a couple of months ago, and it's great to have you back on Kauai. Thanks for making the trip out to talk about what we're doing over here. We really appreciate it. So we made a movie out of that trip. That uh, it was March, I think. And we, uh, <clears throat> for OC16, it played on OC16, which is now known as Spectrum 12, 10, 10 12, 12, 10, 12. Um, and it, it played for a week of seven separate plays. And, and then we put it on our, uh, our uh, YouTube channel where I uh, invigorated it. <laughs> and, and it is now available if anybody wants to watch it. Just go to our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash thinktechhawaii, and you can watch um, the video of our last trip. Uh, last trip, we talked to Beth about KIUC, uh, where we went to Hawaii, what is it, Kauai Green Energy? Yes, the green energy the, plant, our yeah. biomass plant, yep. And then we went to see the dairy farm, such as it is, and uh, then we went to see the Tesla facility such as it is, which is really remarkable. And finally, we talked to Ben Sullivan and uh, Mayor Carvalho, uh, and they're here today at the Kauai Energy Conference. So let's get a handle on what's going on because you've been instrumental. KIUC is, is, is energy in, in the island of Kauai, the county of Kauai. Uh, so why don't you talk about this program, how it got started, and I know that Ben was intimately involved in that and others, but I'd like to hear from KIUC about its role in you know, organizing the conference. Great, yes, we're very happy to work with the Kauai Economic Development Board uh, to help put on this conference. There's a lot of partners involved, the County of Kauai uh, and many others. Um, it's a great conference. I, I, I think we've done three or four of these. They're not done every single year, but I do recall the first one. It was quite a number of years ago, uh, back when we were really struggling as an island uh, to make a, a dent in, in renewables. And so there were a lot of challenges at that time. Um, there was a lot of focus on how we were going to do this, and, and now we fast forward to today. Uh, it's still a great conference, but there's so much to celebrate, to talk about um, how much progress we've made in the last eight years or so, um, and then where the challenges still lie, because there still are some challenges for us, even though we're doing some, some really good things uh, in renewables in terms of uh, the grid um, and bringing more solar and hydro and biomass. But we still have a lot of challenges. So it's a great opportunity uh, for, we appreciate KEDB being the convener um, and all of us supporting to bring everybody together to talk about this stuff and see where we can go. Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I get a lot of messages out of, not only what you've said, but what people have said in, in the course of the conference here today. Because we've seen some great keynote uh, speeches and, and uh, uh, we, we heard Bernard Carvalho sing a song, which was very good. He's a good, got a great voice, actually. He loves to sing. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, you know, I, there's, uh, I'm always trying to distinguish one from the other and trying to, to you know, get a handle on the special personality of one island vis-a-vis uh, -vis another island and one conference vis-a-vis -vis another. So what, what would you say, from your point of view, is the special sauce for the Kauai Energy Conference? I think, you know, I, I did attend the Maui Energy Conference a couple of months ago. I'll be going to Verge uh, this week. I think for Kauai, in most of what we do here, is we're such a small community, and so many of us work together on numerous things, it, it, whether it's energy or agriculture or, um, you know, could be anything, but we're all very used to working with each other, uh, very tight-knit, and we all kind of know that it's really up to us to make it happen. You know, there's a, a it's a small community, it's a small business community. Um, we realize we've got to work together cooperatively or we're not going to get very far. We have the experience of actually working together and seeing results. So I think for Kauai, it comes down to, you've experienced it today, a lot of talk story, very intimate setting, um, folks who know the challenges well and are kind of willing to, to 
roll their sleeves up and come up with some solutions. So, uh, so we really enjoy uh, working together here and the opportunity, especially when we can provide the structure to have, as we did today, you know, in the morning, we've got a lot of um, informational sessions, some panels, putting a lot of information out there, question and answer. And then in the afternoon, we're actually working it, you know, on these various topics like electric vehicles, um, PV for your business. How do we make this happen for more people? How do we make it work faster? Um, and so that's nice to see that happen, that we can really in the afternoon roll up our sleeves and start throwing ideas out there and making it happen. I want to tell you one reaction I've had, and I have several reactions because I'm an observer. Um, one reaction I've had is that here in this conference, it's, uh, it's smaller, uh, it's shorter, but because it's shorter and smaller, you get a more, a more directed kind of discussion. The discussion is shapeable and it is shaped. And whoever thought these things up probably had that in their mind. Um, and so the, other, the, the bottom line on that for me, most important thing is this candor here. People are willing to tell you the good and the bad. They're willing to tell you the, the details. They're not just doing self-promotion. Um, and that's kind of different. I like that. Uh, maybe it's part of the neighbor island style, or maybe it's part of the, the Kauai island style. It could be. I mean, we all kind of know each other. We know, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing really to hide here. And, and uh, like I say, we work together in so many different um, situations, you know, that, that we're all friends for the most part. Um, we're all working towards the same things. And so, uh, and it's nice to have a conference like this on Kauai. As you mentioned, it's, it's one day, um, so it's manageable. Business people are busy, you know, and they can't necessarily take a lot of time. They can't take two or three days. Flying to Oahu or to another island for a conference is expensive and it, it takes a lot of time. And so people on Kauai, I think, appreciate the opportunity to plug in uh, they can take a day and plug in and really dig into this stuff, um, and, and they want to do that. It's just that it's kind of prohibitive if you've got to get on the plane and go to another island and, and all that. So uh, we're really pleased with the turnout today, um, and we know this conversation will continue into the future, and, and we're really thankful that we've got folks who are willing to come to the table and actually talk about it and do the work. Yeah, many folks came from Oahu and, and, for that matter, other islands, and I was impressed with that because the idea is if you come from another island, you feel you can get something out of it, um, pay for the airfare, put in the time, and I think, I think it was clear that they were getting something out of it because there's, there's a whole bunch of things happening in Kauai that are instructive. And as you mentioned before, this has got to be another key word, write this down, it's going to be on the final exam, uh, it's action. The magic recipe, among other things, is that Kauai has found out how to move to action. You said a few years ago there was not much going on, and now look today, there's a lot going on, and somebody has figured out how to make that happen without any fuss, or, well, sometimes a fuss or must, I mean, but, but mostly it got there. It is there now, and, it, and it's not only there, but there's a culture around action in Kauai. What is that? Is that the water? Could be, I think. <laughs> It's uh, it's uh, again small town. You know, it's it's you can't you can't do or not do much without somebody calling you on it. So uh, we we all do a good job of holding each other accountable and celebrating celebrating the accomplishments. And I think on Kauai, what we've done really be able to do really well is well. First of all, we're blessed with a lot of resources when it comes to energy, um, particularly when we went to see the Tesla plant while you were here. We're blessed with. Um, open space, open land, a lot of agricultural land that's not being used. And so we have landowners who are willing to work with us to put up these facilities that take, you know, 50 acres or maybe more um, to put that back into production, um, not necessarily sugarcane anymore, but it's making a, a positive contribution to the island. So we've learned on Kauai, I think, to use our assets to the best of our abilities. And, um, you know, as we've had much success here, we're up to about 42, 43% renewables now, whereas 2008, we were at only 9%, some hydro. Um, we're now at more than 40. Um, it gets that incrementally harder to move the needle a lot more quickly. But, you know, we're looking at more solar projects, some more hydro projects, and it all takes a big partnership, and we all have to be able to work together um, look each other in the eye, uh, be productive, be positive, 
um, be straight with each other, like you said, and and figure out how it's all going to work for all of us. Yeah, you know, I can't help but think of the um, the old Kauai, which was all about sugarcane, and uh, everybody on the island was somehow connected with sugar, working on the plantation or for the plantation or somehow connected. And now there there are, do I have this right? No plantations. Correct. No plant. No plantations. Um, and so. Kauai is in the process of redefining itself, I would say, and it struck me while I was listening to David Bissell this morning um, that, that redefining itself, somehow KIUC and renewable energy in Kauai is at the center of redefining what Kauai is. There's no sugar, so what is it? And it's not, you know, it's, it's, um, to me there was a period of time when everything was all about real estate and attracting people to buy condos and all that. Um, but now that's not really so much the case. Uh, there's more free thought here. There's thought about sustainability and agriculture and being a better place for more people and all that. And so I think that energy is at the center of that. And I'm gonna give you one minute to think about what I said. We're gonna take a break. We come back and you react to what I said. Agree or disagree? That sounds great. That's Beth Tokio. That's Beth Tokio. We'll be right back. To the game and it's gonna be great early arriving for a little tailgate i usually drink but won't be drinking today because i'm the designated driver and that's okay it's nice to be the guy that keeps his friends in line keeps him from drinking too much so we can have a great time a little responsibility can go a long way because it's all about having fun on game day i'm the guy you want to be i'm the guy saving money i'm the guy with the h2o and i'm the guy that says let's go And we have Beth Tokioga. She's the communications manager of my favorite, my favorite co-op, if you will, oh, uh, the KIUC here in Kauai. So uh, I was saying, uh, you know, about redefining, and uh, my 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 proposition to you is that uh, Kauai is redefining itself in energy because it gives so much energy. Energy gives things to people. It, it enables people. It's it's a big enabler, and you enable the energy. So. Tell me how much or how little you d agree or disagree. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. I think, you know, as you mentioned, I think all the islands and, and Kauai for sure um, were dealt a big blow when the plantations all went under. So much agricultural land um, available for use, but not the critical mass of farmers to make that happen and to keep that uh, green space green and to keep that agricultural land in production. And we never want... Kauai to lose that. So how do you manage that pressure uh, for a landowner, you know, for, for Grove Farm, Gay and Robinson, all these landowners who have cost? Um, they don't want to develop their land, but you have to reimagine it. And I think that KIUC is helping to do this, to put some of these lands back into productive use. Uh, certainly there's plenty of agricultural land left for agriculture, and we want to make sure that that sector is stimulated as well. But what we've been able to do um, and what we're seeing, I think, all over the country now is that renewables are becoming so much more affordable. You know, there was a time where everybody mid, like 2005, right around that time, everybody wanted to do renewables. It was the right thing to do for the environment, but boy, at what cost? You know, can we afford to do it? And if, or do we have to sacrifice um, cost for doing the right thing. What we're finding now, through some of our larger solar projects especially, is that you don't have to. I mean, if renewables can be affordable. And so the more that we can provide clean power, uh, keep the cost down, that helps to stimulate all kinds of other activity on the island. It helps our, our families with their budgets. They can have some reliability on what their electric mm -hmm what their electric cost is going to be. You know, having the co-op just in and of itself is such a blessing for our island that our, that our uh, customers, our members, our owners of the yeah. utility. It's, it's a civic um, laboratory and a, a success at that. I, I had some uh, a conversation today with um, 
your director, your vice chair of Ten Bruggengate. Jan Ten Bruggengate. Used to be a reporter for the Honolulu Advertiser, and now he's been chair of KIUC and now vice chair of KIUC. And he's so dedicated. He reported on tech, so he knows a lot about tech and energy. And uh, he, he, to me, um, I hadn't, well, aside from Ben Sullivan, I haven't met a lot of people who've been directors of KIUC, but I have to say it's very impressive to talk to them. Can you comment on the board, what kind of people they are and how they conduct themselves? Sure. We are so fortunate to have a board uh, elected by our members, uh, so they are accountable. We've got a great board of people who are so knowledgeable, and they work hard at it. You know, this is not a, a fluff job for them. They take it very seriously. Uh, Jan has been on the board for a number of years now, and as you mentioned, he's a former environmental reporter for the Honolulu Advertiser and very, very knowledgeable. Each one of our, uh, we have a former judge, we have a former banker, we have uh, such a diverse uh, skill set on our board and uh, they are very, very focused on the goals and the strategic plan that we have, which is at this point uh, getting to 70% renewable by the year 2030 and we're pretty sure we can do that. And, uh, and so, so, yeah, the board, and the nice thing about that is the board, again, is accountable to the membership. So, you know, we have a means and, and an obligation to stay in touch with our members, um, to make sure that what we're doing makes sense for us as an island community. Um, and, then, and then also we don't have a profit motive here. We're a nonprofit. So we try not to, anything that we might charge our members over, what it takes to run the utility will go back to them eventually in patronage capital, which is a great thing as well. It's really interesting what's happened. I mean, in the country in general, and to some extent in the state of Hawaii, state government, um, people are dissociated. Uh, they uh, have lost confidence in government. Uh, they don't feel that government is them or they are government, that it's some other party, uh, you know, which they don't really think much about and don't care much about. But somehow, don't you think, Beth, in Kauai, Kauai has avoided that, that, um, that evolution uh, and that you have really two things that work well. You have the county government, which seems to me to be working pretty well, and then you have KIUC, which is like a modern form, if you will, of democracy, of successful democracy, because people really feel they're invested, they feel they're connected, and, and through that organization, they can express themselves, they can make achievement, um, they can feel they're part of a larger organization and they're, you know, they're, <clears throat> they're actively supporting that organization and they feel that the organization is supporting them. That's what I get out of this. That's true. I mean, it's a really good observation here on Kauai. I think um, with county government, you know, we're so accessible here. Um, I used to work for the mayor's office for many, many years. And so it's, it, it, it always felt like no matter what was happening at the county, state, or federal level, everyone looked to the mayor to fix it. Um, but that's the, that's the dynamic of a small community. And it helps people to stay connected, uh, like we do with KIUC now through our member elected board. Um, they're accessible throughout the community. Our mayor is out there all the time. Um, not that we don't have frustrations and that people don't sometimes get frustrated with what county government is doing or even what KIUC is doing, but I think people don't feel disconnect, they don't feel disenfranchised because we are close enough that we can have that conversation. Might not always agree, but we can be in that conversation and we, and we can all listen to each other. Um, and, you know, and it's great for us too because we get that feedback on the ground. We don't know everything all the time. We don't always know the best way to get things done. So to be able to have that really close feedback from the people that we serve is helpful for everybody, I think. I think you're making history here, Beth. I hope you realize that you're in, you're in the center of a historical process that will be appreciated for years and years as some special phenomenon that happened, not only in Hawaii, but in Kauai, right here. It's, it's really quite amazing. I started with KIUC back in November, um, and so I'm relatively new here, but especially with the opening of our Tesla plant in March, the international interest in what we've done on Kauai is just phenomenal. We've had so many news organizations come from the mainland and, and even internationally um, to see what we're doing here on Kauai, which in, in a way seems, 
I don't want to say easy, but for us as a small community, that's how that's what we do. You know, we just we see a challenge, we we get down, we work it out. We're blessed with great assets and great leadership in our president and CEO David Bissell, you mentioned, um, and our board to see that direction of where we might go with large scale solar, where we might go with pumped storage hydro, and having that vision and the and the fortitude and the what comes with the cooperative, which is being able to borrow capital at a very low cost. So we have we have a wonderful, wonderful portfolio of assets, and I think we have the visionary leadership that's moving it all forward in a great direction for our little community, and we're just really blessed. And I think you're right. I think we are making making history of a sort here. Now, he mentioned in his talk this morning that um, that you guys were going to do 70% renewable by 2030, which is 15, 15 years before the 100% state target of 100% by 2045, um, and 10 years before the uh, Hawaiian Electric target of 100% uh, by 2040. But what struck me is that is that when David talked about reaching 70% uh, by 2030, he actually had a plan. He had a sequence of things that he was gonna do, and he was lining them up right now, so there was no abyss out there, say, in 2020 or 25. It was all accounted for, and that if you just follow these steps that are already planned, you would, you would reach 70% by 2030. I mean, is that the way it works? That's correct. I mean, right now we have a strategic plan. We have that goal, but we also have projects that are on the horizon for us, more, um, more battery storage um, solar. Uh, one project that we're doing with AES right now that we're, is moving through the process. We're hoping that'll be online next year, uh, an even bigger project than the Tesla. Um, another one beyond that and our pumped storage hydro, which should bring us to 70%. And so, uh, you know, we have a roadmap, and it's a real roadmap. We just have to execute on it at this point. Uh, and we have to live so long, too, to see yes, it yes, materialize. Exactly. <laughs> we do, but, but hopefully, you know, if all goes well, and, and it, there, it seems to be all systems go at this point, we have a, we have a path, and so that's very exciting. Yeah, that is very exciting. I mean, you know, when, uh, hearing it today, it just seems so obvious that, you know, this is the way it works, this is what you do. But one question I'm left with, uh, and I wonder what your thoughts are about it, is, uh, okay, so that's 70%. I feel from what I have heard uh, in the past and what I hear now here at this conference, I feel that you guys will very likely make exactly what you, what you expect to make, 70% by, by 2030. But my final question here is, what happens after 2030? <laughs> Does anybody know? I mean, or is that just too far into the future to have a, a handle? Um, how, how do we how do we how do we see that? How does Kauai see that going from 2030 to say 2040 to 2045? Because we still want to get to 100 percent, and so I think we have to leave ourselves some breathing room for what will evolve. Uh, and so we don't know. There may be new technologies or other ways to to do this that are going to be revealed in the next 10 years or so. So we have to be, so that's the, the magic of moving quickly, but not so quickly that you miss opportunities or that maybe you pay more for it than you might have if you just waited. So we've, we've been able to, to balance that very, very well up to this point. We're gonna continue to do that and monitor new technologies, new opportunities, and, and just have the trust that we're gonna continue to, to ride this train. And, and one of the other big challenges that we have as does the rest of the state, is the transportation sector, which hasn't been as easy to make progress on here when it comes to electric vehicles. Let me say that this, this conference uh, has integrated transportation with cost, it has integrated transportation with business. You get a sort of a triumvirate of concerns, cost um, and having business step out and do things. Maybe that's part of the, the action aspect of what you're doing. Uh, and of course, um, you know, it's about transportation, which has got to be inextricably intertwined. I was very impressed with the intellectual content and the issues raised in these breakout sessions. I think you have put all that together, and I think that makes it very worthwhile to engage in this discussion. It's been a really good conference. We had uh, our students involved, too, which was really great, a number of high school students here, trying to get them to be thinking about this, because ultimately, um, we'll be retiring, we won't be around anymore, and they're going to have to take up the torch. And, and these are complex issues, and they're very, very bright kids. Uh, great to see them at the table. They're probably the ones who are going to get us past that hump with some new thinking, maybe. Um, and so we're, we're really pleased that our, a bunch of our high school students were here with us today as well. Yeah, we interviewed them, 
and they're really bright, and they're they're not shy either. No. And uh, you don't get that country girl kind of thing here. They're they're sophisticated players. We got to get some of the guys to come out. It was all girls today that came out, which was wonderful. But you know, we're going to continue to work um, to uh, to cultivate that next generation of interest in these things and, uh, and interest in our island home and how we move it to the next level. Yeah, so uh, in the course of our interview, I asked him, I said, uh, you know, you guys realize that you're the, you're the way forward, that this is gonna be your responsibility uh, to think of how we can do this and to execute the plan. Are you ready for that? And they all unanimously said, yes, oh, absolutely. He, they said, but you know, we'll need some help from the older people too. I love that. Those, those kids are amazing. Thank you, Pat Tokyo. Thank you so much, Jay. Great really appreciate you, you having, having you here. And come back again. <laughs> we will. All Thank right. You, Thanks. Aloha. Aloha.